This is the afternoon edition of the Weather Extreme video for Monday, December 22nd. I'm James Spann. Merry Christmas to you and your family. It's a very active weather between now and Wednesday morning. Potential for heavy rain, maybe some flash flooding, strong to severe storms, a possibility as well. Let's go in there and see if we can sort all of this out and answer your questions. We'll start by looking out the window today with the SkyCam Network. That's a look at uh, Birmingham's SkyCam on top of the Daniel Building. Pouring rain. Uh, when that shot was captured, that was about 2 o'clock. That's a scene there in uh, Jasper and Walker County. The sky is cloudy. And up in Haleyville, low clouds. A little light rain falling in Winston County. Large-scale, long-wave upper trough coming in from the west. That'll set the stage for some sloppy weather around here through Wednesday. That was a uh, radar grab at 2.11 at that point. The most widespread rain was south of Interstate 20. And really, the heavier rains uh, east, of US, or east of U.S. 43. At that point, there was some heavy rain falling northeast of Montgomery. We'll have to watch for some flooding involved with this event, too. I'll show you some model data on rain totals. Very impressive. Temperatures are mostly in the 50s. Uh, Birmingham 54, Tuscaloosa 58. And obviously, the unstable air is not in place today. Uh, this is a look at the uh, surface-based Cape as of mid-afternoon. And you can see the unstable air just moving on shore. Uh, places like Gulf Shores and Mobile, Pensacola, they're getting up into that uh, uh, unstable air, and we'll kind of keep an eye on that as it moves north. The key to this uh, severe weather event is how far north will the unstable air go, and uh, some of the data suggesting it could come up this way by tomorrow night. If you're traveling, that's the watch warning map. The darker purple counties up north, those are winter weather advisories. Got some wind issues over uh, the plains of Colorado and Kansas. Those are high wind warnings and winter storm warnings in effect for the mountains of Utah, Colorado, and New Mexico. And in our part of the world, we have flash flood watches for extreme southeast Alabama down around Dothan into North Florida and southwest Georgia. That's the area covered by the National Weather Service in Tallahassee. In terms of severe weather potential for the rest of today and tonight, a marginal risk over parts of South Alabama, south of a line from near uh, Linden to Greenville to Geneva. And again, uh, late tonight as the uh, unstable air works its way north, there could be a few severe storms near the Gulf Coast. Storms up this way tonight will be elevated. And then tomorrow, this is the latest day two convective outlook. We have a slight risk. That's the standard risk of severe weather along and south of a line from near Tuscaloosa to Calera to Roanoke. The marginal risk as far north as the Tennessee River in extreme north Alabama. And this is day three for the travelers on Wednesday, a marginal risk over the Florida Peninsula and the southern part of the Atlantic coast, basically from near Virginia Beach on south. Uh, this is the uh, QPF chart coming from the WPC guys. And uh, it's got a bullseye of five inches around Tallahassee. But uh, let me just jump right to some model data here. This is coming off the uh, high-res NAM. And uh, this is suggesting potential for five-inch rain amounts over parts of uh, East Alabama. Uh, really, some of the bigger amounts are south of Interstate 20. Uh, and if this verifies, we'll have some flash flooding issues. So uh, just be aware of that problem as well. And based on the radar trends we have seen today, uh, that output looks pretty good. All right, let's look at the severe weather potential. This is the GFS valid tomorrow at noon, the 12Z run of the GFS, the global forecast system, uh, troughing over the nation's midsection. And down below that, we have a surface load that's forming around Lake Charles. And we're just being a big rain mass tomorrow. Uh, and, you know, one of the issues is the fact that it does look like we're just going to be in a big rain mass throughout the day. And sometimes that uh, rain can keep the air uh, stable. Let's track this surface low. Uh, this is noon tomorrow off the new parallel high-res GFS. Uh, at noon tomorrow, the surface low is near Lake Charles. 6 o'clock tomorrow evening. And by the way, let me point out the colors. That is the instability, surface-based uh, cape, convective available potential energy. That's the buoyancy of the air. And you got to have that in place for severe weather. And the numbers aren't that overwhelming. Uh, but at 6 o'clock, the surface low is just north of Jackson, Mississippi. This is midnight tomorrow night. The surface low is between Memphis and Nashville, down to 999 millibars. You can see the Cape values are just underwhelming. They're under really 300 joules. Doesn't take a lot, you know, to get severe weather going in the cold season, but uh, that might be a limiting factor. And then by Wednesday morning at 6 o'clock, that low is south of Indianapolis. And you can see the uh, uh, front, the boundary coming on through there at that time. Uh, this is the high-res uh, NAM data at 4 o'clock tomorrow, and just a big mass of rain. And, and again, I, this could be more of a flooding problem than a severe weather problem. 
I think that's a very valid statement. Uh, rain just keeps on coming. That should not be severe at that point. And then this is 6 o'clock Wednesday morning, and that's the last batch of showers and storms coming along the I-65 corridor. So the main chance of the stronger storms, uh, I would say, in terms of severe weather, uh, 6 p.m. to 6 a.m. 6 p.m. tomorrow until 6 a.m. Wednesday. Look at the uh, parameters for midnight tomorrow night, the low-level jet. These numbers are more impressive now on this run. It's got a 60-knot core that's over extreme northeast Alabama and east Tennessee. Uh, but the better dynamics, the, the low-level jet is setting up over the eastern part of Alabama at midnight tomorrow night. This is the bulk shear in the low level, surface to 925 millibars. That's okay, 30 knots. That's sufficient for rotating up drafts. The core higher numbers are actually a little east of here. And the EHI just does not want to get above 1, uh, which is good. You want to keep that number underneath 1. Um, and this is the STP, the significant tornado parameter, valid at 9 o'clock tomorrow night. And it gets up to one unit around uh, Tuscaloosa. And again, that's not overwhelming. So, you know, I would say this is not a major severe weather setup for us. Uh, looks a little out of phase. Could there be severe weather? Yes. Could there be a tornado or two? Yes. And all it takes is one. We all know that uh, to be a big day for you and your neighborhood. But in terms of, uh, you know, the threats, I, again, I might suggest flooding could be the biggest issue. And again, there's a look at that uh, projected rain coming off the NAM through 60 hours in those darker shades of brown. That's five inches plus. And based on what we've seen today, I would believe that. So I wouldn't be shocked if a flash flood watch were to be issued. So that's the core risk. And then by midday Wednesday, it's all out of here. And Wednesday will be a day with falling temperatures. I think we start the day Wednesday morning probably around 60 or maybe low 60s, and then we fall through the 50s during the day. Um, pretty good uh, west to northwest wind kicks in. Christmas Day looks beautiful. Bright, sunny weather. We start the day down in the mid-30s, the high in the middle 50s. Exactly average for late December in Alabama. Same thing Friday. Looks good. Partly to mostly sunny with a high close to 60. Cold front coming in Saturday. This is going to bring the chance of a few showers. Don't think it rains uh, all day or rains too much, but there certainly could be some rain on Saturday. And then Sunday, uh, the air mass a little cooler, but really not by much. Uh, high still in the 50s. Looks pretty comfortable. And this is a week from today, Monday the 29th. Big troughing in the western U.S., and we are dry at that point. Go out there deeper in the forecast period. This is uh, December 30th, evidence of a, a cold front trying to knock on the door. Very cold air north of us. Could bring some showers there. January 4th, that looks just wet. We've seen other runs that look cold and dry. And this is the 7th of January, nice trough in the east, and that looks pretty cold at 1037 high just north of us. And again, you can see evidence on the ensemble data. Temperatures uh, trending clearly colder toward the end of December, the first part of January. And how cold and details, we just don't know that yet, but just something to watch in coming days. That's it for the Weather Extreme video this afternoon. We'll have notes in the blog next video here by 7 o'clock tomorrow morning. And if you can't catch us this evening on the live stream of the television side, ABC 3340 News at 4, 5, 6, and 10. Thanks for watching. Have a great evening and God bless.